Satisficing is an underknown, underused tool from the 1950s that I believe every single teacher must deeply understand and must practice. So what the heck is it? Why is it so important and how do you get started? Here's an excerpt on satisficing from Daniel Levitin's The Organized Mind, Thinking Straight in the Age of Information Overload. I'll put a link to that book in the description. He says, satisficing is a term coined by the Nobel Prize winner Herbert Simon, one of the founders of the fields of organization theory and information processing. Simon wanted a word to describe not getting the very best option, but one that was good enough. For things that don't matter critically, we have a choice that satisfies us and is deemed sufficient. You don't really know if your dry cleaner is the best, for example. You only know that they're good enough, and that's what helps you get by. You don't have time to sample all the dry cleaners within a 24-block radius of your home. And here's the important point. Satisficing is one of the foundations of productive human behavior. It prevails when we don't waste time on decisions that don't matter, or more accurately, when we don't waste time trying to find improvements that are not going to make a significant difference in our happiness or satisfaction. So the claim that I'm making is that satisficing is one of the foundations of productive teacher behavior. Because just like Levitin's dry cleaning example, we have a million different tasks that we're expected to do as educators. And not all of them are just that mission critical to get the very best outcome for that task. For many of the tasks that we face, many of the things on our dockets, it's actually ideal to just pursue the simplest method for satisfying the requirements of that task rather than trying to be the best at that task. I often write about this Yerkes Dodson curve. I'll put it on the screen here, but it's just a simple idea that we've had for over 100 years that human beings can only stand so much pressure before they basically go nuts, experience misery, get burnt out, and underperform. This is why so much of my writing and my videos focus on not just the best strategies for, for things like cultivating student motivation or improving literacy and content mastery outcomes, but the simplest strategies. I'm after high bang for your buck approaches to education because your bucks are limited, your energy is finite, and you can only do so much in a sane person's working week. So this is why satisficing is so important, but the problem is where most teachers get stuck is how do I get started? How do I begin becoming an expert satisficer? So it's really as simple as three steps, just three steps will make you a better than average satisficer. And that's going to make you a much better than average teacher because you're going to be more likely to stay on the top of the Yerkes Dodson curve where yes, there's some pressure, but not so much that it inhibits your performance. And as you get better at satisficing, you're going to find that your life just generally improves. Step one is to become clear on what are your top level goals? What is your work for? I call this in other videos an Everest statement. Let's see if I can link to a video right here, or if I can't figure that out, I'll put it in the description. But for the purpose of this video, step one is you just have to know what the heck you're after. So things like having kids master your content as much as possible, making them better thinkers, better readers, writers, speakers, growing their knowledge in your content area. These are the types of things that you probably are here for. These are the things that you are meant to be doing in your job as a teacher of blank. Step two is to list out all of the tasks that you're required to do in a given week. And if you're having a hard time brainstorming that list, just take note for the next, let's say two days of work, all the different things that you do. Let's see what I have on my list. Planning lessons, understanding your curriculum, cultivating good productive relationships with each student, pursuing professional development, dealing with your email inbox, designing the physical space of your classroom, giving feedback on student work, maintaining your grade book, scheduling observations with your principal. Maybe you're on committees, maybe you're a coach. Just list out your list of stuff. And then finally, rank order this list. What stuff goes in the top tier as most closely linked to the goals that you have for your course? The stuff that we did in step one, which of the tasks that you do are most closely connected to that task? So if your goal is just, I want my students to master mathematics as much as possible, which of those things in your list are most linked with mastering mathematics? So in the list that I just gave, understanding your curriculum, that's gonna be the top. Planning lessons, top. Maintain the physical space of your classroom, not as close to the top. Your email inbox, not as close to the top. Understanding your teacher evaluation rubric, not as close to the top. Are these things so unimportant that you can skip them? 
No, I don't recommend never checking your email again. I mean, from a just enjoyment of life standpoint, that might be nice, but you'll lose your job eventually. I don't recommend ignoring your observations with your principal, but I'm just saying these things are not as closely linked to what your class is for. After you rank order your list, challenge yourself to take the bottom three or four items on your list, the stuff that's furthest away from that which matters most, and ask yourself, what would it look like to just get by in these areas? So so for example, email, a lot of teachers check their email every single hour of the day, but I've never met a teacher who says, yes, all of the emails that I get and check are so closely linked to why I'm here as a teacher. So what if instead of checking your inbox every single hour of the day, you just checked it twice, once in the morning or any communication that may be relevant to today's work, and then once in the afternoon. And every time that you check in in the afternoon, you set aside a good 20 minutes so that you can process all of those emails. Aggressively archive stuff that you're not just super confident matters to you. Get good at responding to emails that need a response with a brief professional response. Add anything to your calendar that's date related in your inbox. Just process that inbox during that 20 minutes. Now what you've done is allowed your mind more time in your day to focus on things closer to the top of your task list. Your ability to concentrate on stuff like lesson planning, stuff like giving students during lesson feedback, understanding your curriculum. These things are going to be easier for you to focus on and bring quality to because you're not being constantly distracted and diverted by your email inbox. If you have specific questions about satisficing, ask me in the comments. That'll probably be the best way for me to help you now that you understand what satisficing is why it's important and how to do it. Take care.